Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be The Lone Ranger. Original air dates March 2nd, 1945, and the title is A Marshal's Mother. Let's get into it, and I hope you enjoy. Horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past and the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver, the Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Let's go, big fellow! I'll see you Tom Stokes, the fighting marshal of Abilene, Kansas, was shot in the back by Purdy Rogers and his gang of outlaws. News of the killing spread like wildfire throughout the West to arouse a wave of indignation among the law-abiding and cold fear in the hearts of the lawless. I just heard the news from the stage driver. Curly Rogers gun Tom Stokes to death. Us gunslingers better keep out of Abilene. It'll be a hot town for a long time to come. Well, Curly and his gang will probably hold out in the Indian territory. Well, he will if he's smart, and Curly Rogers is smart. As mayor of Abilene, I swear to run down and hang Curly Rogers. If it costs every cent in the city treasury. Offering rewards ain't going to do much good if Pearlie and his boys hole up in the territory. That's a hard country. If we just had another lawman as good as Tom Stokes, he'd find him in Injun Badlands or anywhere else. Why can't we get one like him? Well, there's one fellow that could do it. We'll get him then. Pay him anything he wants, but get him. That's easier said than done. You see, nobody seems to know where to get him. What nonsense are you talking about? All I can promise, Mr. Mayor, is that I'll pass the word along we want him. Yes. Then pray the word gets to him. Tonto brought news of Tom Stokes' death to the Lone Ranger, and also the grapevine message that answered a prayer uttered in Abilene a month before. They were in southwest Texas at the time. We must leave at once, Tonto. Tom Stokes was one of the most courageous lawmen the West has ever known. Ah, me no. We're many miles from Indian territory. Here, Silver. It's going to be a long, hard ride. And that's only the beginning. A plenty bad country. Here, Scout. 
Yes, it's a hard country. A country that's produced hard men. Some of them good, some of them bad. Ah. Tom Stokes was born in those bad lands. Steady, easy, Silver. <laughs> now his killer's hiding out there. Uh, you, you know somebody in Indian territory, Kimasabi? No one. That may be fortunate for us, Tonto. Me not savvy. I hope we'll be taken for outlaws, seeking a hideout. We'll be more welcome. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. bleak country where Indian territory bordered Texas, a lonely cabin stood out clearly against a dull red setting sun. In the unfenced front yard stood a middle-aged woman whose right hand stroked the butt of a six-shooter in a holster strapped to her waist as she watched the approach of a horseman. Something wrong with that rider. He ain't setting his saddle. Well, he'd better not pull any funny stuff. Whoa, whoa, you could have, whoa. Uh, help me. Help me. Yeah, oh, out oh. of the saddle. You've been shot, partner. You've been shot bad. Please, help me. I, I'll pay anything. I'll pay you. I didn't ask you for pay, did I? Now, you take it easy while I drag you into the shack. Oh. Easy now. I'll, I'll pay you anything. Help me. Oh. Quit your gabbing. Save your strength. <laughs> The following morning, the wounded man was much better, and he sat at the rough board table eating his breakfast as his benefactor stood beside the kitchen stove and watched him with steady eyes. Don't mind if I sit facing the door, do you? No, not if you got a reason to not sit with your back to it, I ain't. Well, you fixed me up mighty good. And bullet wounds don't even hurt now. I've probed for lead before. I have, huh? Kind of lonesome out here for a woman, ain't it? Sometimes living in a lonesome place pays off. I reckon you wasn't hunting for company when you rode up here last night. Huh? Well, uh, no, not exactly. Didn't think so myself. When I mount that cayuse again, I'll appreciate it if you'll just forget I dropped in on you. Fact is, I'll pay you well. Didn't ask for no pay, did I? Oh, you didn't. But I've got money. I could have took it last night when you passed out if I'd been a mind to. I reckon you could have at that. Why don't you sit down and eat your breakfast? When I got guests, like you, I just set one plate. Yeah? What do you mean by that? The sheriff's got a habit lately of dropping in unexpected like. I'd have too much to explain if there's two plates sitting on the table. Oh. Oh, I get you. Where's my horse? He ain't where you or anybody else will find him. When you need him, you get him. Wait. You hear that? Looks like I'm going to need him pronto. I was afraid of that. Company coming. Company with a big shining star in his chest. So that's it. Now you know why I wanted to set face in the front door. Yes, I knew why you said that way. Now you listen to me. You pull anything and I'll drill you. Shove that gun back where you got it. I ain't going to turn you over to the law, you fool. What are you up to? Moving these floorboards. Now, come over here. Sit down there under the floor and you'll find it roomy enough. A hideout. Yeah, and a good one. Now keep quiet down there until I let you out. Yeah. Now I'll make a sound. Now finish up his vittles for him. Come in. Ah, it's the sheriff. You're just in time for breakfast, sheriff. Uh, sorry to disturb you, ma'am. It's early in the morning. Won't you pull up a chair? Fix up some vittles for you. No, reckon not, ma'am. Me and my deputies just dropped by to find out if you'd seen a wounded fella come by here sometime late yesterday. Maybe last night. A wounded fella? No, folks don't come by this way very often, sheriff. Yeah, I know. He's kind of out of the way. That's the reason we stopped off here. If you're insinuating... Ain't insinuating nothing, ma'am. Yeah. Mind if I take a look around the place? Help yourself, Sheriff. Keep them deputies out of my hen's nest is all I ask. I can get more eggs these days than I can use myself. Deputies <laughs> is taking a look over your barn and corral. 
Reckon you don't mind none, ma'am. You're welcome to look where they please. Sure you won't have a slice of ham, Sheriff? Ain't got much time. Ain't no sign of them out here, Sheriff. Well, get back to your horses. I'll join you. Who are you looking for, Sheriff? One of Pearly Rogers' gun slicks. Name's Mike. They stuck up the bank in Hammond. Yeah? We know we winged Mike. The rest of the gang got away. You don't say. Well, I hope you'll pardon us, ma'am, for busting in on you like this. No harm, man, of course. It's all right, Sheriff. Drop in any time. Adios. You can come up now, Mike. You're sure they've gone? Yep. You can finish your vittles now. Shove them boards back the way they was. Right. Don't want nobody walking in here sudden like finding that little hind in place. Yeah. So, uh, you know who I am? Yeah, I know. You want a Pearly Rogers gun slicks, eh? Yeah. I want to thank you for what you've done for me. Uh, if you need to hide out again, you'll know where to come, won't you? If you don't mind. Never can tell when me and the boys might ride in unexpected like. You'll be safe here. What's your name, ma'am? I didn't ask what yours is. Sheriff told me. Yeah. Well, I reckon it don't make no difference. You got reasons, probably. Yeah, I got reasons. It's a mighty good breakfast. And if you don't mind, I'll be shoving off. No, I don't mind. Your horse is hidden a clump of scrub timber at the end of the draw. I take you to where he is. You'd never find him. Come on. <laughs> A few minutes earlier, the Lone Ranger and Tonto had ridden over a rugged bridge in the Indian Territory in time to see a group of horsemen ride up to a cabin. Oh, Silver. Oh, oh, easy, oh, fella. Oh, fella. Easy now. Looks like a posse, Tonto. Ah. Me see bright badge on man's coat. Yes. The one is going inside the cabin. The others are scattering out, searching for something. Ah. We better keep out of sight. We'll take shelter behind this ridge and circle around behind the cabin. Ah. Let me see timber over there. That'll be good shelter for the time being. I won't, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Oh, ho, oh, 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 Scout, oh, fella. Oh, fella. This clump of timber will hide us from those lawmen. They leave. I want to find out why they're interested in that cabin. Oh, maybe it hideout. Certainly, they weren't paying a friendly visit. After something or somebody. Wish I could see the cabin from here. Hobby. What is it, Tonto? Look, they're horse and bushes. Mm, he's saddled and ready for riding too. Come on, Tonto, let's look him over. Uh, Come on, Silver, easy now. Easy, Scout. Easy, fella. Keep a keen eye, Tonto. They might ride into an ambush. Uh, me watch. Oh, Silver, oh, 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 Come on, Tonto. Steady, Scout, steady, fellow. Whoa, now, whoa, fellow, whoa. Just want to look you over. Not been ridden for several hours, at least. Ah. Why keep saddle on all night? Whoever hitched him out here probably planned on getting away fast if he had to. Oh, see here, Tonto, in the saddle. Ah, that blood on saddle. Yes, and his rider fell off. Him fall off? How you know, Kimasabi? There's blood on both sides of the saddle, Kimasabi. See? Ah, uh-huh. me see it. Well, you know, Tonto, that an experienced rider gets off a horse on the near side. When he does, he clears the saddle with his right leg. That right. Well, you notice here on the right side of the saddle, the blood is smeared all the way down. Ah, uh, me see. The rider didn't clear the saddle with his leg when he got off. So he fell off. That mean... That why lawmen look for him. That's right. The same posse we just dodged. So you're dodging the law too, eh? Get him up, masked man. And get him high. There goes for you too, Injun. Get your hands up front. Me get him up like this. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. The Lone Ranger and Tonto, hiding in a clump of timber to avoid a sheriff's posse, came upon a horse whose saddle was bloodstained. They were interrupted by Mike and the old woman. As guns were drawn, the Tonto suddenly slapped the horse, then... <laughs> He got the squaw. Let loose of me, you Injun. You give me that gun. I quit. You got me, masked man. You're not hurt. Just keep away from that gun and you won't get hurt. Mike, he shot the gun right out of your hand. Mike, I didn't like the idea of shooting at a wounded man. But I had no other choice under the circumstances. What are you trying to do? Steal my horse? No, we've no need for another horse. What are you doing back here in this timber? Maybe the same thing you're doing. Dodging that posse. Did you see him? Yes. The sheriff went in your cabin, and his deputy scouted the barn and corral. He must have had a good hiding place for Mike. Yeah? So? Is uh, that hiding place big enough for my Indian friend and me if the law happens to come back? Maybe. Why, you're not going to take a perfect stranger in, are you, Ma? You don't know nothing about him. When you rode up last night and fell off that cage, you was a perfect stranger. I took you in. Yeah, but you found out who I was. You didn't tell me. The sheriff did. Anyway, when we was listening to this big fella, we heard him say that dodging that posse. Yeah, I recollect now. The big fella did say that. Give the woman her gun, Toto. Ah, yeah. Your gun. Thanks, mister. You can pick up your gun, Mike. What? I can? Well, now, you must be on the level at that, giving my gun back. No hard feelings. You were protecting your property. I was protecting my life. And maybe a private business. <laughs> Yes, my private affairs. Well, now the shooting's died down, I reckon I'll be moseying along. If you ain't got any objections. No, none at all. I don't think you'll be hunting for any lawman to tell them you saw me. You can bet your bottom dollar on that, mister. Get up there. He's gone. You better bring your horses. Isn't this good cover for them? Not now, it ain't. Mike might decide to swamp. Todd will take care of him. Ah, come, Super. Come, Scout. Right nice names you got for your engine and horses, stranger. Yes? Yes. Come on to the shack if you're ready. I'll fix up some vittles. Mike returned to the hideout that had been arranged before the holdup in Hammond. There he found Pearly Rogers alone. Pearly told him. When we broke up, they must have formed several posses. Yeah, I reckon they would have. They did, I said. One of the posses caught up with Pete and the breed. Got word a while ago. Both of them are in jail at Hammond. They don't say. Well, it leaves only me and you now, Pearly. And I come nigh getting nabbed myself. Well, let's hear about it. Where you been? Who fixed you up with the bandages? I don't remember much about what happened after I got hit. I was bleeding bad. I saw a shack and headed for it. Pearly Rogers listened sullenly to the first part of Mike's story. When he told about the encounter with the fast-shooting masked man, a cruel cunningness came into his eyes. When Mike had finished the story, Pearly said, And you mean to say you picked up your gun, got on your horse, and rode right off with your back to him? Sure I did. Anybody trail you here? No, I'm certain of that. Why? Mike, that big hombre with a mask is the Lone Ranger. What? <laughs> You're crazy. What would he be doing in Indian territory? Ah, you're just dumb. A black mask, a big white stallion called Silver and an Indian. You say you left him with the old woman who took care of you? Yeah, sure. He said he's dodging the law. She took him in just like she done for me. Uh, at least I got one advantage. What do you mean? You don't know where I am. And I do know where he is. Come on, Mike. Hey, where are you going? To get the Lone Ranger before the Lone Ranger gets me. <laughs> Hiding Silver and Scout in a deep draw of the rugged terrain, Tonto returned to the cabin where he found the Lone Ranger and the woman he disarmed. Throughout the afternoon, the woman went about her chores saying very little. But it was evident to the masked man that she was watching his every move and hearing his every spoken word. After supper, when Tonto left to feed the horses, she went to a picture hanging over the crude mantel and withdrew an aged and worn purse. Then she pulled up a chair beside the table and sat down, facing the Lone Ranger. So you're dodging the law, eh? I'm not looking for the law. Who are you looking for? I didn't say I'm looking for anybody. I know you didn't. I'm asking you. You needn't be afraid to tell me. Why should I tell you? 
I've got something to show you. Here, here it is. Ever see this man? Tintype. Yes, I've seen him. Why? I'll show you something else. I think you'll recognize it. There. Bullet. Silver bullet. That silver bullet was given to the fellow you see there on the tintype. Give to him by the Lone Ranger. Well, it's evident you know who I am. Yes, I gave it to Tom Stokes. First time I met him. How do you happen to have the tintype and the bullet? I'm Tom Stokes' mother. His mother? Tom Stokes was born this cabin, in this very room. Masked man, I knew the minute I saw you shoot that gun out of Mike's hand today. Mister, my son thought a heap about you. I thought a lot of Tom Stokes. That's why I'm here. You're after Pearly Rogers? Yes. Then we're after the same man. I don't understand. I thought this was a hideout. This man, Mike, the sheriff's posse. When they brought me word that Tom had been gunned to death by that low-down gunslinger, Pearly Rogers, I swore I'd get him with my own hand. So I come back to the old shack. I know that sooner or later some hombre on the dodge would give me a lead to where I'd find Pearly Rogers. That's all I was waiting for. Mike gave me that lead when he rode in here last night and fell off on his horse. I hear someone riding this way. You're right. Quick, come here. Uh. That's the hideout. Hurry up. It's probably the sheriff again. He's been dropping in and here mighty regular ever since I moved in here. You see, he don't know who I am. And I'm not telling. Pearly Rogers is our game, not his. I'd rather not meet the sheriff myself. Might take too much explaining. <laughs> Just call for help if you need it. I will, if I need it. We are ready to welcome anybody. Who is it? It's me, Mike. Oh, come in. What you come back for? I brought somebody with me. Who'd you bring? I never told you to bring nobody here. It's Pearly Rogers. Pearly Rogers? Uh, oh. Why, my gracious, Pearly Rogers. You mean you got him with you? I bring him right in here. Pearly, come on in. So that's Pearly Rogers. Yeah. I'm Pearly Rogers. You want to sit down, Mr. Rogers? No, he ain't set. Where's that mask, hombre, you was around here today? Him? Why, he pulls stakes. Him and his engine partner. Seem to be in a mighty big hurry. We come by the clump of timber. The horses are gone. Which way to go? South, out of here at least. If he comes back, I want you to get word to me pronto. Savvy old woman? Why, yes. Did you know who he is? Sure. He's the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? You don't say. Ma, let us know if he comes back. Won't you, Ma? Yes. Of course I'll let you know. <laughs> hey, look here, Pearly. See these boards over here? Yeah. Ma hit me out under these very boards. I was under there all the time the sheriff was prodding around the shack. Don't make a move, old woman. <laughs> Why, what's the matter with you? Hey, Pearly, what's the idea? Ma's all right. Yeah, take a look on this table. Oh. What? A silver bullet. Look at that tintype. Well, I'll be... That's a picture of Tom Stokes. Your game's up, old woman. Now, come on. Where's the masked man? Wait. There's somebody coming. You hear him? Yeah. It's probably the hombre we're looking for. Come over here in the corner, Mike. Out of sight from anybody coming in. No woman make one move and you're dead. Savvy? I come up here to talk to you, woman. I want to know what you're up to. Me and my deputy just trailed Pearly Rogers and one of his gunslingers into that timber back yonder a piece. They ain't there now. When my boys get up here, we're going through this shack with a fine tooth comb. Hey, what's these things on the table? A picture of Tom Stokes. And a silver bullet. Why, that's... Get him the... up, Sheriff. What? Pearly Rogers. Get over there by the stove. Come on, move. I don't know what you're up to, Rogers, but my deputies will find you. Yeah. He'll have an easier time finding you, Sheriff. Now, stand right there. Mike, go over there and move them floorboards. You see, Sheriff, when I shoot you, you'll be found down there in the hideout. Mike will put the boards back in place and we'll ride off. When your deputies get here, they'll look down there and find you and they'll arrest the old woman here for doing the job. I better move all three of the boards. 
The sheriff will need a lot of room to fall into. Get away from there. Get away. Hey, what's this all about, old woman? Oh. <laughs> Mike. I think I got it. You got what? You know what we come here looking for? The masked hombre? Yeah, the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? Why? Mike, I'll keep the sheriff and the old woman covered. I want you to find something out for me. Find out what? I'm going to lift these boards. Get away from them boards, you fool. You want to get your head blowed off? My guess is right. The Lone Ranger's hiding down there under the floor right now. Well, I'll be a son of a gun. Curly, I never thought of that. Now, take your gun and fire down through Ooh. them boards. Sure. If he's down there, he won't be in no fix to fight when we lift the boards. No, no. <laughs> guess that proves my point. Go ahead and shoot, Mike. Hey. Well, what you stalling about? Go on, shoot. My gun's busted. It, it won't work. He busted it. Who busted it? Oh, oh. I did. But I shot it out of his hand today. The masked man. Not that gun for Oh, you won't get the gun. Boys, <clears throat> I've got a mighty big apology to make to this lady. A mighty big apology. You don't owe me no apology at all, sir. The fact of the matter is, I should be apologizing to you. Me thinking I could handle Curly Rogers all by myself. You see, deputies, this here lady is Tom Stokes' mother. Wow, mother? And we've been thinking all the time she's running a hideout for law dodgers. Well, I... I reckon that's what the masked man thought until we both found out we was after the same man. I've heard about that fella and how he could shoot. Never took much stock in it, though, until now. Now I believe anything you say he can do. Who is he? When us deputies come in, we thought he was a sidewinder. Deputy, the masked man is the Lone Ranger. Are you still there? you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com and we hope you enjoyed please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.